What's up kiddos and welcome back to another drawing with Trevor and today we're going to be talking about value and more specifically how to use value when you have only a pen, not a pencil, color pencil, but just a pen. It only comes out in one color. I'm going to show you techniques like hatching, cross hatching, stippling, and scumbling and it's really fun. I think you're going to enjoy it and these are techniques that you can use to draw almost anything. So get your pens ready and let's get started. All right, so over here I have my little cool house that I made. Um, my actual real house doesn't look all that cool, so I did kind of a haunted house type look. But uh, you can draw your house if you want to. You can draw really any kind of style house if you want to. But I'm using four different shading techniques with a pen. All right, and let's talk about those four types of shading real quick. So the first one you have is called a hatch. And a hatch is a series of straight lines that are all going the same directions. That's called a hatch. And then a cross hatch is a lot like the hatch, except after you have the one side of the hatch, you go back and do a cross hatch. Same hatch, but it's like the opposite. It makes little bitty X's. So if you wanted something to be a little bit darker, you use a cross hatch. Now, stippling is little dots. So imagine you had like maybe some sandpaper or the concrete on um, a sidewalk. If you look at it really closely, it's a little porous. Or maybe for like a sandy beach, you'd use stippling. Uh, this is a way to show texture too. So it's also shading with a pen and it's also creating some texture. Scumbling, um, I always thought of it like, imagine you, pour, you uh, peel a hard boiled egg and then you drop it on the ground and then it rolls or, or a hot dog. And then you pick it up and you can see that like, because it's wet and all sticky, it, it looks disgusting and you, and you don't want to eat and you got to throw it away. That's what scumbling would be. It's like really random little hairs and stuff. And maybe it's a great way to draw, you know, your dad's legs or something like that. So I am going to use all four of these different shading techniques on my house. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get uh, a blank piece of paper ready. And I have two different kinds of Sharpies. I have the ultra fine point Sharpie and I have the fine point. So one's a little bit wider and the other one's a little bit thinner. So uh, I'm going to start by drawing my house with the, the fine point. We'll start with the fine point. And I feel like I could have made my house maybe a little bit lower because there's a lot of uh, blank space right there. So I'm going to actually come down a little bit farther and let's start with the front of my house. Remember, if you want to, you can draw it uh, a little differently. You can like Google uh, different kinds of like haunted houses or you could Google your own house or you can go outside in front of your house and, and draw it if you wanted to. Just start with the basic shapes that make it up. Um, a lot of rectangles, a lot of triangles. And since this is a haunted house, I'm not gonna worry if some of these angles are Diagonal, I think that adds a little bit of the character to it. All right, there we go. It's looking good so far. Let's do this roof real quick. Then I have the other one. A little short, that's okay. I don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. All right, let's do the ground real quick. The horizon line. It's on the hill. And let's do the, the stairs real quick. So I draw kind of a rectangle shape and then diagonal. Or like they kind of stick out. Then let's draw the slab of concrete that house is on, which is right there. Looking good, looking good. Okay, now let's go ahead and add a couple little details to my house, these fun little windows. Uh, let's start with the door. Hmm, 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 hmm. Uh, maybe I don't make that angle so extreme. Now, a fun little thing to make your house, your doors and your windows look a little more realistic is I do a little border. If you look at your door frames and your windows, you usually have um, kind of like a trim or an edging around it. Same thing with the windows. I see a lot of kids, what they do for their their windows and stuff is they'll just do, like for example, to do the square and then they just do the plus. And one way you can make it look just a little bit more realistic is you draw 
frame, and then you draw the actual window pieces, which are squares. So it's like you have the squares there, but then you could color the trim, you know, like if you wanted to, after you do something like this, you could color around the glass green or, or maroon, you know, a fun color. Takes like two more seconds and it makes your art look a lot better. All right, let's do a nice big circle. It's a little bit bigger than that one. And then draw little right angles. Looks kind of like the X-Men sign, you know, if I was to turn it, X-Men. Now let's do a window over here, it's like an arch, and then inside looks kind of like an intersection if I was wanting to draw like a map uh, and I was looking down and there's like an intersection of, of two roads. If you've ever been on like uh, Google Maps and you see like a fun little road, all right, let's do another one. Let's do like a tall one right up here. Same thing, it's like a rectangle on the bottom and then has a little bit of a curve on the top. Okay, and then let's do two more windows here. Same thing, rectangles. And now I am finished. Now let's go ahead and I'm gonna start doing the shingles and I'm doing just a kind of a scale pattern. I'm just gonna do little U's. If you ever uh, did the rainbow fish with me in kindergarten uh, or the owl in first grade, this is a, a very common pattern that we use. Uh, it's really nice. Our eyes like pattern, they like repetition. We, I mean, that's why like you go to the store and you see so many clothes with like fun patterns. Our eyes like pattern. And when you incorporate patterns to your artwork, you're going to draw viewers into it. So here underneath, I don't have enough room, so I just kind of draw which parts I do see. Okay. Just a little use, and they just go from the bottom of each one. Simple but effective pattern. Now, I'm gonna probably use stippling on that, because if you've ever felt like a shingle before, um, I don't know if maybe your parents redid a roof or something, or maybe uh, it was a really windy day and uh, part of your shingles like blew off. Um, if you're touching them, they have a, a grit to them. It's like a bunch of little like pieces of sand they glued on it. I've never been really sure of why they like that. Um, some places, like uh, if you go down to like Florida where it's like really hot, they have uh, ceramic shingles, and they look maybe something kind of like this, but uh, it's all ceramic. It's like red. One more row. I'm probably gonna have a little bit more over here because it's it's wider here and thinner here. And that's okay. It's a spooky house, so it doesn't have to make sense. Right, left, right, left. Yeah, be careful when you get to the edges and stuff like this. Um, you know, you don't have to fit like a really skinny one. You just draw it, and then when you run out of room, you just stop. I'll look right to the end. Try to make all your scales the same size. I mean, I, I know like you can kind of tell that they got bigger as I went down. Not a big deal, but you know, try to work on it. Now, I'm going to draw my uh, siding, which is like just straight lines. And I think it's easier to draw going down to up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn my paper over like this and draw line. I'll probably come over here and draw it just to make sure that it's the same like spacing. I might draw, if I just drew it on this side, like let's say I did like 11 and then I come over here and I did 10, and, I think it bugged me, so. Continues over. This is siding. Maybe vinyl, maybe wood. So I'm not drawing it, I stop when I get there. I don't know why, I guess I could. Uh, this is probably, okay, this part right here is a little bit farther back, and this is, this is sticking out a little bit, so. When things are closer to you, they're bigger. If things are farther away, they're smaller. So you probably have a little bit more, you know, like room. That's a skinny one. So now let's draw these, and they're a little bit bigger because they're closer to me. Or to us, the viewer.
Yay, all the way through, all the way through. Not worried about if they're not completely straight, not using a ruler. If you want to, you could use a ruler. It probably would look awesome. I think because it's kind of like a, a spooky house, I'm not too worried about it. But some artists are very meticulous. They sit there and they they use like a ruler for everything and they will, like if you're drawing your real house, then you know you could go out and actually count how many levels of siding there are. It'd be a lot of work. And uh, sometimes a lot of work pays off and it looks so good. So it's really up to you like how much time you want to spend on something. Sometimes when I draw, I like to like put something on the TV or listen to some music so you know, my brain can kind of turn off or think about something else why it does something that's, it's called monotonous. All right, there we go. Looks pretty good. A lot like, I don't know which one I like better. All right, let's add some of my fun shading techniques. So, um, for the siding, I used hatching. And so what I did was I just drew, I pretended like, let's say the sun's coming from this way and it creates these shadows, kind of like the sun is right now. And so, there would be a little bit of shadow on this side, so I'm just drawing like little straight lines. On the left side. So on the left of every single shape, I'm going to draw my hatching. Now typically if I'm using a pencil, I don't really draw hatching or cross hatching with a pencil. Because with a pencil you can get pressure and so you can do you can like just actually shade it but for a pen there's no pressure all the pen does is put out one one value it's just black da -da -da. sometimes I might add like a couple other lines just here and there because if you look at siding that usually has like a texture it's usually made out of wood or the plastic is molded to look like wood So do it on the side right here by the the window. Maybe it's sticking out a little bit, casting a little bit of a shadow. Door frame too. All right, all right, looking nice. Um, now let's do maybe some cross hatching on. The stairs, the top stair, I'm gonna do one angle, then do the other. And you can kind of choose which uh, shading you want to do. Like you don't have to do hatching where I did it. You could do cross hatching. You could experiment, it's fun to experiment. Like I think my other one was a little different. Then do some stippling, little dots, show that little grit. Now when you do a pen and ink drawing like this, where you're just doing like, just ink, it's just black and white, you want to try to get balance. Balance is super important in art. And that means that I have one that I'm balancing, I'm using all of my paper wisely, you know, I have good negative space. Um, but I also want balance of, of color. And so like you want equal parts black and equal parts white. Our eyes like balance. Sometimes things can be off balance, but Typically, if you're using a pen and ink, you want to do about 50% black, 50% white. That's why, you know, I try to make it nighttime. So if I feel like if this is a little bit, if this like too much white right here, I probably could have done more uh, scumbling. But for this project, for it and its purposes, I think it looks good still. All right. Uh, what was I doing? Oh yeah, stippling. Let's do some scumbling. Now, scumbling is kind of an art form, you know? Like, it, it's hard to draw random stuff. So I'm drawing the grass. Grass is all crazy. It's unkept, you know? This house is run down. They haven't mowed in a while. Maybe they've never mowed. And there's lots of weeds. So I'm just kind of going a little bit everywhere. Little short little things, you know, like little curves, little straight lines. Maybe going left, maybe going right. 
like I said, think of like, you know, you, you just uh, got a hot dog out of the package from your refrigerator and you dropped it on the ground and it rolled on the floor and, and then you pick it up and you just can see all that gross stuff. That's kind of what this looks like right here. All right. So on the left side right here, I'm going to get a little bit darker, you know, kind of build up all my scumbling because it'd be a big, sharp, uh, big shadow right there. Same thing over here by the stairs. A little bit more than the other places, because a little bit of a shadow. All right, that looks good. So it's very dense over here. A lot of scumbling, but then as it gets closer to the, where the light's coming from, you get a little bit less of it. And you still see a little bit, kind of indicates the texture, you know, like you can see like, oh, hey, uh, if you could feel that with your hands, there'd be a lot of little pieces of grass and weeds going everywhere. All right, looking pretty good. Okay, before I go and do the sky, I think I'm pretty much done. Um, I want to go and add, fill in some black, because if you look at my previous one, I did the, the cement block that the house sits on. I did that all black, and then all the frames I did black too, because I'm keeping this black and white. If you wanted to, you could color it, but I think sometimes there's some, some simplicity. Uh, there's some beauty and simplicity, so. Black and white sometimes looks really nice. Looks very artsy. Oh, you know what? I didn't, I didn't add a, a doorknob. How did you do that? There's no way to get into this house. It's a fancy doorknob. Not your typical little circle one. It's a, it's like a handle and a little button. There we go. Yeah, boy. Right. Switching back to my, my fine point sharpie, my the bigger one, makes it a little bit easier to color things in black, especially large areas. But notice that I used my, my thinner Sharpie to do all of my uh, shading. So all the hatching, cross hatching, I use all the thin Sharpie. Because the fat Sharpie, too thick. I mean, if I had a giant piece of paper, it'd be okay. But for like this little bitty, bitty like nine by 12 piece of paper, you definitely are going to want a fat Sharpie. Now, sometimes, like when I go to restaurants and stuff, um, you know, they give you like a little paper placemat. Um, if you turn it over, there's a nice, great uh, white canvas that you can work with. And I usually ask Mrs. Turbridge if she has like a pen. And so that's usually when I get a lot of cross hatching and I get to play with all these different uh, shading techniques because, you know, I want to color things in and, and shade things. But usually moms don't have pencils in their purse, usually pens because they, they write checks and whatnot. So, looking good. Now to do my sky. Now, I'm going to do cross hatching because I think it's like the darkest. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of go around and do little patches of hatching. And then I'm going to go back and do the cross hatch. So I'm going to do a little time lapse right now because this is going to take a hot second. But it looks really cool and I think the payoff is worth it. So time lapse now. Looks nice and all finished. Got my house looking good. I don't know which one I like better. I probably like this the first one I did better, but that's okay. 